Hello, this is a message for Joe Chiani and all the delegates at the wonderful patient safety movement. Um, I'm in freezing London at the moment, and I so wish I could be with you in a much warmer California. Uh, but uh, with Brexit and one or two other things going on here, which you may have picked up on, unfortunately, I can't be with you. I, as uh, the UK's Foreign Secretary, have to deal with many issues um, in the Middle East um, to do with hostages. Uh, and you deal with all these issues, but you also remember that some of the big issues that you deal with stay with you for your whole life. And my exposure to the patient safety movement when I was health secretary, which is the job I was doing until the middle of last year, is something that will quite simply always be with me. Because in the early days of doing that job, I just asked my officials in the Department of Health a simple question. How many avoidable deaths do we have every week in England's National Health Service? And the answer came back, about 150. 150 deaths every single week that could have been prevented. And so I started to talk to some people about this and uh, try and understand what was going on. And some of the very first people I spoke to within about six months of taking on the job were two very special people who are with you at the Patient Safety Movement Conference, Scott and Sue Morris. And they lost their three-year-old son, Sam, to sepsis. And they described the reaction of their local hospital when they started to ask questions about why Sam had died. They said the shutters went down, no one wanted to talk to them, no one wanted to meet them. In fact, the only person who said sorry was their local GP, um, perhaps one of the people who in the early stages hadn't spotted the potential sepsis. And you know, the problem with people shutting down or not wanting to talk about these problems is that they went, we then don't learn from them. And the same thing happens to another child somewhere else. And Scott and Sue and many other patients and their families who suffered terrible anguish as a result of medical error have chosen to do something that most people would never do. They've chosen, instead of closing down that issue and moving on, they've chosen to relive their tragedy over and over again to try and stop the same thing happening to other people. And when Sue stands up on the stage and talks about what happens, what happened to Sam and why Sam died, don't think for a moment that isn't causing immense pain to her to have to recount what happened. But, you know, because of Sue's campaigning, uh, even this Christmas, she put out a whole series of tweets explaining in, in gruesome detail what happened to Sam. But because of her campaigning and those of others, other parents in similar situations, in the UK, we've had a massive increase in sepsis awareness, which we think has already saved 1,600 lives. And we're starting to see some similar patterns uh, when it comes to stillbirths, where we've seen our rate go right down, uh, when we've seen um, neonatal injuries, uh, those rates starting to go in the right direction, uh, surgery infections, which can be fatal, medication error, which we know kills uh, around five people every single day in the UK. And the heart of this is to swap a litigation culture for a learning culture. So that when things go wrong in a medical context, instead of the fear of lawyers, we have the hope from learning. And that's really what the patient safety movement is all about. Joe's given us an incredible challenge by saying we need to get to zero avoidable deaths. I salute that ambition. I salute Joe and his team and all of you for your interest in patient safety. And I just want to leave you with the words of an inspirational American lady, Margaret Mead. She said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you very much.